today we're going to show you a really amazing slow cooked beef cheeks recipe. So soft that it falls apart with just the touch of a fork. So this is what you need. An onion, you can use any color you want. A carrot, you actually do need a celery stalk which I don't have, but that's okay. I don't really like celery. Uh, four, clo four cloves of garlic. I'm using three beef cheeks because they're fairly big, um, but you can like use six small ones, four big ones. I guess it kind of depends on how many people you're cooking for. And I only cook for me and my husband, so he'll probably eat this and I'll eat about half of that. See if that works. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is, you know, this to my carrot. Just shave it on down. You're just gonna dice it up. For me, I like to usually cut it in half and then in half again. You can do a more fine dice. I like mine pretty chunky. So there's the carrot done. Next, we're going to dice up the onion. I have a few little tricks on how I do this. First, you gotta Peel all the skin off. So what I do is cut the onion in half like this. Then you push down on the top like that if you prefer and cut a few slices along like that. Sometimes a little more. And then you do some long ways. Wipe away those tears. It'll all be worth, all be worth it in the end. Next thing you gotta do is just check your beef cheeks. Like you wanna cut off any like really fatty bits. I mean, leave some of it, but um, you don't want too much fat. So. I like to cut off anything that's gonna like feel really tough in your mouth. So like if anything feels really gritty, This is a really hard bit. You wanna make sure your knife is really sharp when you're cutting into meat, cause you don't wanna like chop it up and make it look really gross. But this that I'm using is Wagyu. That's why it's so marbled like that. And just, you know, feel around. If there's anything that feels extra tough, Cut it right off. A lot of people don't do this and you really should. So we have to sear off our meat. But in order to do that, you really wanna make sure your meat's nice and dry. So get a paper towel and just like dry off each of the meat so that when you stick the salt on it and you sear it off, it doesn't have any of that water or liquid on it. And you can get a really nice sear. But this is an important step when you're cooking anything that you're gonna sear off in a pan. So if you're making a nice steak for dinner, Make sure you just pat down your meat with paper towel and get off some of that excess liquid. That way you get that nice, crispy outside and really tender meat in the middle. Now when you're seasoning, you wanna make sure that you coat each side of your meat with plenty of salt and pepper. What I like to do is just spread it on like this and then kinda of pat it in to make sure the salt's getting right into the meat. That way when you sear it, it doesn't fall off. Just sear both sides of the meat. When you're searing meat, you want to make sure that your temperature on your burner is up high. That way, right when you put your meat in the pan, it starts to sizzle. The other thing to note is to make sure you do not crowd your pan because then your meat is not going to get a nice even sear. See that nice bit of crispy brown sear? That is beautiful. That's what we want to see. Also, remember when you're searing off any kind of meat, they do tend to shrink, so whatever you start off with originally is not going to be what you end up with. Good. So 
got the nice beer. We'll pull these out and get ready to saute our veggies. Now we're gonna come back over to the pan, which I've taken off the heat and added some olive oil to. My pan was really hot, so I didn't wanna burn my veggies when I was putting it in. I'm just gonna stir these around, make sure everything gets nice and mixed in with the olive oil. Oops, <laughs> there goes an onion flying off into the great beyond. <laughs> now I'm using a garlic press for my garlic because I don't like to take the time to chop it up. So here I go. I don't like to put it directly on the pan, so sometimes I like to just make a little bed of vegetables so that I don't burn small bits of garlic when I'm putting it in. And then I'm gonna stir it up and it'll all get incorporated. You know it's ready when you get that nice smell of garlic and your onions are translucent and soft. So we're gonna turn our burner down because we're gonna add some wine to this. But first what we do is we're bringing our little veggie medley over to the slow cooker putting it all there on the bottom. And then we're going to bring our meat over and stick it on top of our veggies. Now we're just gonna lay our beef cheeks on top. Look at that nice sear. So the next thing we do is my favorite part, the wine. Now this recipe, because it's gonna be in a slow cooker, it needs kind of a punchy, like bold, big red wine. So like a Cab Sav, Merlot would work. Um, we like Cab Sav in this house, so that's what I'm using, some yellowtail. Doesn't need to be that nice of wine. Like I wouldn't use more than a $20 bottle to do this. Anyway, so you're gonna do two cups of red wine. Now we're gonna bring that delicious red wine over to the pan. Try not to take a sip when you're walking over. I know it's tempting, but it is 10.30 in the morning for me. Make sure you scrape down the bottom of your pan so you're getting all those bits of seared meat and vegetables off the bottom, giving it that extra bit of flavor. Then we're gonna bring it up to high heat and make it simmer. Get them bubbles! So after you let it simmer for about a minute, take it off the heat, bring it over, and give your meat Nice wine bath. Get in my belly. Next, you're gonna add just the remaining ingredients. So this is a cup of beef stock, so you just put that right on top. Doesn't need to be heated, just to add more flavor. And then you're gonna get these. You can do fresh thyme, so if like you have fresh thyme sprigs, you could do like four or five sprigs of it. I was not thinking ahead enough, so I didn't get any fresh. It's always better to use fresh, but today we'll use dry. So you're gonna add a tablespoon and a half. So now you know that, sprinkle it over, and then a half, like that. And then you're gonna, if you have fresh bay leaves, I would only add three because they're a little more potent, but I'm using dried again, so I'm gonna add four because they're just a little less potent than fresh bay leaves. So one, two, three. Now what I usually do for the crock pot is do half the time on high and half the time on low. It's really up to you. Like for this recipe, you could do 10 hours on low or eight hours on high, but I kind of do half and half. So I'll do about eight hours, but I'll do four on high and then four on low. So then you just set your slow cooker. Then you check it in about nine hours. Um, I like to, cut, like I said, come back in about four and then turn the temperature on to low. And then I'm gonna make some really nice creamy mashed potatoes on the stove and roast some asparagus in the oven. Make a really nice salty, asparagus. It's really delicious. And that's about it. All right, now we're back about eight hours, like I said I did, and about four hours on high and four hours on low. I checked my beef, my beef cheeks, not beef cheeks, and they're really tender, so when I pull them out now, it's going to be really soft, and then we're going to make gravy. Make 
See, look at that, it's like falling apart. It barely wants to stay together. On some slow cookers, they have a saute slash sear um, button. Mine does, not everyone does. So if it, yours doesn't, you'll just need to do this in a saucepan on a stove. What I'm doing is getting an immersion blender, like a stick blender, and I'm gonna puree the um, gravy in the drip. Tonight's sides are crispy roasted asparagus in the oven and mashed potatoes. But first you wanna check your gravy and if it's not at the right consistency and it's not thick enough, add a little bit of cornstarch and kinda of make it whatever consistency you like your gravy to be. As for my mashed potatoes, I like to add some sour cream and milk and really blend them well because I like my potatoes really smooth. So I'm just using my immersion blender again to make them the consistency that I like. I have made some mashed potatoes and some crispy asparagus in the oven and now I'm gonna get the plate together and it's gonna look beautiful. Thanks guys for watching this video. I sure did enjoy eating it with my hubs. If you try it yourself, I would love to hear how you went in the comments below. Until next time, this is Abby. I can't wait to eat with you.